Hi. We are two days away from the month of the dragon. Wow, how exciting. We're going to be entering into this uh, time when the energy is going to be duplicated in every way possible, not just in Bazi, but also in feng shui, in our environment. So can you just imagine how powerful this energy of the month is going to be? And so let's um, let's dive right into um, tonight's material. Uh, again, you can go on my YouTube channel to check out all of the previous talks. Um, it's always advisable to check out at least the previous month or at least the previous two months, um, because it gives you a place to reflect and um, examine um, the evolution of your energy and what has manifested since that time. It's just a really great tool to use to decompress and also to breathe in new energy and new awareness to what's to come. We feel a little bit more um, grounded and settled and clear intended moving forward. So um, these materials are complimentary. I prepare them every month for the community of folks who are interested in um, staying in alignment with the wisdom of the five elements, particularly. Can you please mute yourselves? <laughs> okay. I think Marcella. Hi, Marcella. I think we heard you speaking, but that's okay. You're muted now. All right. So, um, the start of the dragon is technically only the third month into the year, okay? So if you haven't received or listened to the Chinese New Year talk for the year of the dragon, um, it is still a good idea to grab a copy just so you have a general sense and knowledge about what this year has in store. And since we're going to be talking about the Dragon Month, a lot of what we've talked about or touched upon during for the year is actually going to be intensified in a very short kind of condensed period in the next four weeks. Um, and so it's really just a good idea to stay informed. And it's also very helpful if you're interested in continuing your studies in Bazi and in Feng Shui. So if this is something that is of interest to you, just go on my website to purchase a copy of the recording. Um, this coming Saturday, I'm doing an introduction to Bazi. The format is going to be a little bit different than how I've taught it in the past. Um, and I am offering this virtually um, so that other people in other places can actually join us. So um, this is just for Bazi, and we're going to be diving more deeper into um, the structure, the configuration, and the functionality of Bazi. So again, if this is something that is of interest to you to learn, um, I would encourage you to partake in that as well. Okay, so in two days, <laughs> we're transitioning into a new month. And this month is Yang Earth Dragon. If you're familiar with the Bazi um, technique, we always know that the energy comes in a pair. There's always a character on the top and a character on the bottom. The character on the top we say is the heavenly stem. Okay, heavenly stem means it's just the five elements in their yin and yang variation and they change um, every 10 days, every 10 months, every 10 years. Um, and then the bottom character is the earthly branches and they are typically the animal signs and we have 12 of them, okay? So again, that also changes every 12 days, every 12 months, every 12 years. So now we come to this new month it is yang earth dragon there is nothing but earth here yang earth dragon is all earth 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 okay so if you've ever had your bazi read in the past generally you would know what are your favorable and unfavorable elements okay and what do we mean by that is unfavorable uh, means if the elements are favorable to you mean they are supportive to your chart and so when they are favorable, that's when we typically feel supported energetically. We feel like we're in a flow. Things don't feel, you know, like they're resistant. We just feel like we are coasting and moving forward. If it's unfavorable, unfavorable means it's not helpful to us. So if we have too much of these unfavorable elements, this is when we can actually experience the imbalances of the elements um, where we feel stuck, we feel stagnant, 
agitated, you know, frustrated, things aren't going our way. And we can have unfavorable days, or we can have unfavorable months, years, or a whole decade, right? So the reason why I'm reiterating this this month, because this is all earth, it's just all earth element. So depending on your Bazi chart, you have to ask yourself, is earth my favorable or unfavorable element, okay? So again, that is more um, case by case specific. Um, if you've had a Bazi session done with me before, it's easy for me to look at your chart and tell you if it is favorable or unfavorable, but more difficult if I haven't worked with you yet, okay? So that is uh, the energy of the month. So let's take a look at what Yang Earth means. Yang Earth is like the mountain. So uh, people who are born on a Yang Earth Day are generally compared to like a mountain. They're they're very steady, um, very consistent people, right? They're slow to change. They're very nurturing and super protective. Um, just imagine looking out, you know, in nature and looking at the mountains. Um, they don't move. <laughs> and the only time they move is when there is an earthquake, right? And when there is an earthquake, it is felt, not just by the person, but by everything around them. And so generally speaking, Yang Earth people, if your day master is Yang Earth, their experiences in life is quite uh, dramatic, okay? And why is that? Because Yang Earth people tend to be quite strong and sturdy. Not much really get them. They're not faithful. Um, by the little things in life. They don't get thrown off easily. Um, they're not uber sensitive uh, where, where there's a sense of fragility about them. And so what happens is in life, sometimes the universe has to get their attention and the attention comes in a form of an earthquake. You know, so these are more dramatic life experiences. And so oftentimes when I work with Yang Earth people, um, you know, they, they have uh, very interesting stories to share. And um, they're they're a little bit stubborn. They're stuck in their ways. Um, they are, um, they desire consistencies in, in everything that they do. And also they expect that in the people around them. Um, but when they're not well, when they're out of balance, um, they can be a little bit more obsessive in nature, whether that's obsessively worrying or they get anxious, um, uh, they start to exhibit controlling behaviors because mountain people like to be in control and they're very, very reliable to those around them. Um, people lean on them, people depend on them and because they always are in control. And so when they're not well, they feel like their life is out of control. And so then their behaviors start to manifest in these really um, rigid rigidity and uh, they can appear very controlling. So these are just some examples of popular Yang Earth people. Um, and then with the dragon sign, the dragon is also Yang Earth, okay? So now you have this month the energy of the mountain and the mountain. Can you see <laughs> too much mountain energy? That means everything about this month is very dense, you see? It's not like your pitter-patter, flow, you know, watery, la-la-la, fairy, fairy, fly kind of energy. This is very dense. It means people are very set in their ways. People can appear quite stubborn, um, you know, uh, unwilling to change. There's a sense of resistance about this month. And again, the dragon itself, uh, which we'll dive into a little bit more as we go, um, the dragon also represents um, the springtime, sort of the end of the spring. Now, I know in Western astrology, we're talking about, oh, it's just the start of the spring because Remember in Western astrology, the, the zodiac sign begins at spring equinox, which means at the peak of springtime. But in Bazi, we actually start on the first day of spring, which was February 4th. So that's why when we come into the month of the dragon, this is the beat of the spring season before we transition into summer. And any time and every time an element represents a transition of anything, the energy is always a bit wonky, 
You see, whether if we're transitioning from spring to summer, summer to fall, especially during that time, or fall to winter, that space between the seasons is very, very fragile, very finicky, very sensitive, super precarious. And so that's the energy of the dragon. So can you imagine that same concept is applied to the year, right? 2024 really represents the beat before we transition into the fire years, right? So that's why um, a, a, when we couple that with being feng shui period nine, again, I talk a little bit more about this in the Chinese New Year talk, um, the start of period nine in feng shui, there's just so much going on with the dragon itself. So think of April, right? If, you, if you're looking for a word to guide you this month in your meditation or in your self-reflection. I, I like to call April as the month of Rees, R-E-S, right? Kind of the recalibrating time, the resetting, reflecting, remembering, reassessing, okay? Or relaxing kind of month. And I've been saying this time and time and time again, April is not the month to be launching anything significantly new, nothing brand new. Now, if you have contracts or projects or conversations that are happening in April because it's a continuation from February or March, like you signed a contract in March and so the project is going to start in April, then that's fine because the initial kind of start to that project or to that endeavor happened in a different window, right? It happened in the rabbit month or it happened in the tiger month, but we really do not want to be jumpstarting anything brand new during the month of the dragon, remembering again that there is no nobleman in the dragon. So now you have no nobleman in the year, you have no nobleman in the, in the month, okay? So that's why um, we want to keep this month very simple, okay? You just want to coast. You want to be as light and, you know, I, I would say like up in your step, just as light as can be, all right? We don't want to be having serious conversations. We don't want to be rocking it out, kind of like getting in people's faces. We just want to be chill, all right? So think of April this way. Now, because this is an earth element, <laughs> nothing but earth, the emotion related to earth is meditation. And, you know, in, 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 in the expanded definition of that in Chinese metaphysics also means faith, faith and trust, right? And so I've talked so much about this, about the, the meaning of the dragon for the year, all right? So I was telling a client earlier, you know, um, I had a conversation with my teacher many, many years ago, and he said, if we lived in a perfect world, and what he means by perfect is if we as a society really lived in alignment with the movement of nature, what would we be doing at this time as a society, as a community? We would all be taking a sabbatical and we'd go up the mountain and we would go and meditate with the monks in the temple. Okay, like that's the description of this dragon month in this dragon year. But of course, we live in a Western society where we're in the hustle mindset. We're busy. We got so much going on. We got bills to pay, people to see, places to go, right? And now you wonder why we're all sick, right? Because energetically, we're all out of balance because we are not doing what? We're not meditating. We are not resting. We are not cocooning. We're not up in the mountain, you know, apart from all of our duties and obligations to just be one, one with God, one with ourself, one with nature, right? And so obviously <laughs> we can't just take a sabbatical, like a timeout, like a four week timeout. And so the key is how do I practically incorporate this information in my day-to-day -day life? How do I recreate 
that picture of what it would be like to be up on the mountain where I can just pray, I can really work on my intuition, listening to my gut, having the space to really just be. How, how does that look like in my life? Everybody's different. Some people have little kids they have to raise. Some people have multi-businesses to run, right? And so I invite you, if you haven't already, okay? If you haven't already, you got to get with the program here. How do I incorporate that in my day-to-day -day life? Because I cannot just go and go on a retreat, you know, for the next two weeks. So does that mean I have to do that early in the morning? where I have 10 minutes to myself, where I can meditate? Is it at the end of the day, right? Where I can decompress my day, right? So this is very, very important. That's what's going to continue to support you, going to continue to nourish and keep you grounded. Grounded is not a mental thing. Some people will tell me, Jen, I'm grounded, right? Until something happens and then their whole entire life just whoosh, everything then it's like panic at the disco. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that's not grounded because when you're grounded, you have fresh, honest, and good perspective about your situation. You're not driven solely by emotions, okay? And you're when, we, when you have all of those things in place, then you're able to have, um, then you're able to draw your decisions from a pure and clear place, right? So to do what? To have solution, right? To trust in the process, to be able to just be in the muck. Sometimes, sometimes life demands us to be in the muck, right? But again, we are a society that is very uncomfortable with the muck. We try to get out of it as quickly as possible, solutioning our way out of it. And the Dragon Month would be, you know, it will be very interesting to come back next month and just decompress to say what what came up for you during the Dragon Month and how well, how well prepared were you going into the Dragon Month? OK, so the general theme theme of this month, again, the duplication of anything means magnify. OK, everything is magnified to the double. OK, and so we already know the year is very powerful. It's a year of radical changes. It's a year that demands everything. It's asking everything from us. OK, and so here this month, right, think about all the things you wanted to do to incorporate your goals, your lists, you know, your manifestation, your vision board, the whole shenanigan that you had put together at the start of the year. April is a beautiful month to reassess where are you at without judgment, okay? Again, we want to be grounded. We don't want to be emotional and judgmental. We just want to be grounded and taking a clear look, a clear assessment as to how far we've come, okay? And then making the necessary changes, but not changes out of panic or guilt, right? Or of um, FOMO. All of these emotions are negative. We don't want to be operating from that place. So the more grounded we are, the more compassion and grace we can extend to these circumstances to say, all right, it didn't work out the way it needed to work out, but I'm going to put my head down and come up with a different path. And I'm going to go with that. Right. So that's much healthier. Um, and then Again, April is also going to prepare us to go into the summer season, which will be, be the beginning of the fire season. Um, and so anything with transition is like purging, eliminating, simplifying, right? Just like any kind of transition, we're preparing our spaces, preparing our hearts and our minds. Again, because this month has so much earth energy, we really have to pay attention to these things. It's our intuition, the gut right? Our gut instinct. What is your, your instinct telling you? You know, um, for some people, their intuition is very, very magnified in April. Your dreams are more vivid. Um, your, the downloads are coming in strong and hard. That's why we need time and space to process them, either through journaling, talking with a spiritual director, you know, having a healthy mechanism to process what is coming through. 
if you're so busy running around like a chicken, you're not going to have, you're not going to give it the space that it needs for you to really work with what is, you know, what is coming through. Um, there is a um, emphasis on our gut health. We'll talk about that in Chinese medicine. But again, look at the mountain. We're looking for stability. We are looking for consistency. Just stick with it. Okay. Stick with what is working. Stay with it and be consistent with it. Again, we know that things are going to be hypersensitive, heightening all of those negative emotions. Um, and so it's going to interfere um, with our you know, ability to kind of stay focused mentally and spiritually. So just paying attention to that. Um, I, I shared this at the Chinese New Year talk, and, and I said the three pillars that are essentially the antidote to fear, anxiety, worry is faith, hope, and trust. And so if you've been following all along since the Chinese New Year talk, it is my hope that you are doing your work, whatever that might be, that resonates with you, that has been a consistent source, um, that has been elevating your spirit, because you need to stay in this space. Remember, we have another sensitive month coming this year, which is October, all right? So, but April is going to be kind of like the first checkpoint to say, mm, how well are you doing really, okay? So just stick with that. Um, earth element is also associated with the mother uh, when we look at the archetype of earth element. So think about the mother, like think of a healthy mother. I like to think of um, the Virgin Mary, Mary, mother of God, is kind of like the, 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 that epitomizes mother, right? The one that is compassionate, all loving, unconditional, nurturing, a place of safety, right? So think of that. And if you have a healthy relationship with your mother, perhaps April is a beautiful time to honor your mother. I know Mother's, mother's Day is in May, but, but think of the the, the meaning of what mother means, right? When, when we have healthy relationships with mother. Um, and so it's trying to imitate um, those characteristics um, that epitomizes sort of the superstar of the mother and bringing that into your life, okay? Bringing that to your life. And a lot of us are nurturers, you know, and we like to to extend that generosity to our friends, to our families and, you know, our community. But here's the challenge is how can you translate that to yourself? How can you mother yourself? Okay. And so that's the time, the month of the dragon is, it's not just self-care. All right. I'm not talking about like bubble bath and, you know, to, if you do those things, Excellent. Continue to do those things. But I'm not talking about the regular self-care that you've been doing, you know, in 2023 and 2020, you know, 2021. I'm talking this is next level self-love. OK, so just kind of meditate on that, whether you're meditating on your mother, a mother figure. All right. A mother role model or you yourself as a mother in your motherhood, just think about maybe putting down the three words that epitomizes mother and ask yourself, how can I, how can I embody this or how can I incorporate these characteristics more into my life? Um, the mother, you know, uh, is, is very much associated with the heart. Um, when we talk about Chinese medicine, we say that a strong heart is a strong belly, or at least that's what I say. And why do we say that? Because the heart is a fire element and the gut is an earth element and fire supports earth. Okay. So when there is fire, it supports earth. So when we say that the heart is happy, right? What, what is the heart is happy? That means when I feel joy, when I feel optimistic, when I feel hopeful, when I feel uplifted, when I feel expanded, right? When I feel love, that means my stomach, which will be my ability to have faith, my ability to trust other people, my, my, my sense of confidence, my worth huh, are much, much stronger. And it's the same thing. If I feel anxious, if I feel doubtful and cynical, and I'm always worried, like a worry wart, that means I have an imbalance in my gut. And that's a reflection of what's going on in my heart. 
what does that mean? Maybe I'm not as vulnerable. Maybe I'm not as open. Maybe I'm not as joyful or satisfied and content with life. And so oftentimes, like when I do Bazi for health, and not just from a physical health perspective, but also the emotional ties of health, um, I always look at the relationship between the heart and the stomach. And so why am I bringing this up is because I want you to begin to think that way. You know, like maybe you're going into the dragon month. You're like, gosh, I, I really don't believe in anything. <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there. Maybe I have no faith. Um, I have no faith in other people. I always have to be the one to do stuff, you know, because I can't trust anybody. Nobody can do it as better, you know, as good as me, for example. Then that is an earth element imbalance because we're talking about trust, which is a stomach. Then I want you to take a step further and ask yourself, well, what's blocking me in my heart that's making me feel that way? You know, was I hurt? And so there's a block here. There's a burden in my heart. Am I angry? about something, right? Maybe somebody hurt me in the past. They didn't come through. They broke their promises. They said they would do something for me, but they didn't. So now I don't trust anybody to do anything. And so now that that anger, that resentment, that pain <clears throat> that hurt me is right here in my heart. And so the way to cleanse that, the way to move past that in order to begin cultivating a feeling of trust or a sense of trust in others is to what is to clear the heart, right? It's to begin the forgiveness. And so I'm inviting you to, to just have a reflection, okay, on where, you know, where's my heart? Where's my belly, <laughs> you know? And you can look at it from a physical perspective, like how is my cardiovascular health? Do I have high cholesterol? Do I have you know, heart palpitations, right? Um, am I constipated? You know, do I have acid reflux? Am I bloated? Um, you know, from a physical perspective, these are also telltale signs of what's going on energetically in our body. And then those emotions, right? Because we are all energy being. They, for some people, it manifests in the physical body and other people, it manifests in the emotional state, okay? All right. Um, I thought this was kind of cool that, um, you know, Dragon Month, you actually have these different things going on, like National Garden Month, Garden, hello, it's Mother Earth. Um, I think there's also Earth Day, right, that that happens in April. Um, and I like this, National Humor Month, <laughs> because we're going to need humor, all right, in the dragon. And if you can actually look at your circumstances for what they are with a, a good sense of humor, then I'd say you're doing pretty good, okay? I'm not talking about delusional humor, you know, where you're denying what's happening, but you can just actually see it for what it is, take a step back and go, you know what? That's kind of funny <laughs> because there's nothing else to do. Either I cry or I'm going to laugh about it, right? Move more month, move more. It's a physical body, which is very interesting because this is earth, earth, right? Very, very dense. So energetically, we will feel very dense too, like kind of heavy, kind of lethargic, kind of like, oh, I have so much to do, but I feel really heavy and I feel like I'm carrying the weight of the world, right? And so it's, it's one thing to honor that dynamic that is supposed to happen. So you're not going to say there's something wrong with me. What's wrong with you? Why can't you? Why are you lazy? Why are you blah, blah, blah? like all of those silly crap noise that don't belong uh, in this space? You're just going to recognize it for what it is and say, you know what? Wow, I do have days where I feel like I could take a nap more. <laughs> okay. Or maybe I need to start my day a little bit later rather than 5 a.m. in the morning. Maybe I do need an extra hour of rest just to restore my body. And then to move more, just to have those gentle physical movement also allows the energy to flow through, okay? Um, and then also we talk about the dragon being spiritual and there's a lot of holidays, you know, religious holidays that are taking place coming into um, the month of April. So just very interesting connections with all of these. Um, I already talked about uh, the stomach, you know, in Chinese medicine, but earth element in Chinese medicine is a big deal. All right. Because it covers 
so much, like so many parts of the body, particularly the cells. And mm -hmm. so when we're talking about cells, um, I'm going to ask somebody to please mute yourself because we can hear you um, clearing your throat. <laughs> so um, it, the cells of the body. So oftentimes when there is too much like earth imbalances, that's when we see people have um, autoimmune diseases, right? Because what are autoimmune is it means like your body is um, fighting itself, right? It thinks there is a foreign object. And so it's trying to fight some foreign object. Um, inflammation of the body, right? It doesn't recognize a thing. So it's going to you know, or it doesn't produce a certain enzyme, right, to break down what it needs to break down. And we also see a lot of cancer. And cancer is an earth related disease. So when I do my Bazi um, formal training, we actually dedicate a section of the course where we talk about health. OK, and oftentimes you can already see that in certain people, they have a, uh, um, a predisposition, right? Just like we go get DNA tests, genetic tests, whatever, whatever. In Bazi, we can see that from an energetic perspective. Some people do are predisposed where they would um, be more susceptible or receptive, receptive to earth-related diseases. Doesn't always mean cancer because there's also other things that's associated with earth. But oftentimes people, when we look at famous people, um, that have passed away from cancer of some sort, like Patrick Swayze, Aretha Franklin, um, Steve Jobs, like all of those people, it's because of a earth-related imbalance. So that's why we we take earth element pretty seriously along with the water element, okay, which we'll not talk about because we're not in the water season. So just something to remember uh, that we need to spruce up our gut health, right? Eating with the season, you know, doing gentle cleanses, um, really paying attention to what you're absorbing. You know, it's not just like what I'm eating, dietarily speaking, but also what am I digesting energetically? What am I consuming? What am I watching? What am I listening to? You know, what, what conversations am I listening to? And why am I, you know, what am I swallowing? And how am I processing that, mm -hmm. right? Ideally, a healthy person when they eat, right? their digestion does their thing, takes all the nutrients, and then they poop, right? There's a physical bowel movement. Well, we also need this from an energetic perspective because we're always on social media. We're, we're in a society that's busy, super noisy. So we're constantly, constantly absorbing and digesting energy from everyone, everywhere, okay? And if we don't have a good practice where we allow our body to just take in what is good and then coop out what we don't need, what happens is we store up all that energy and then that's when people feel sick, okay? And so really ask yourself, how do I cleanse myself energetically? Maybe it's body work, maybe it's through um, breath work, Maybe it's through um, some kind of physical movement, right? Maybe it's through other types of modalities that are available to us. There's so many of them, but we need to really up level um, these um, self care, self love practices going into the month of the dragon. All right. So people will have a clash. All right. With the dragon, if you have a dog sign anywhere in your Bazi chart, in your four pillars, if you're born in the year of the dog, month of the dog, day of the dog, or the hour of the dog, that means if you already have this, you have a double clash with the dragon month because then you would have a clash to the year and then clash to the month. This is a double clash. All right. So very, very sensitive. If you're already going into this year feeling a little spastic, a little on the edge or kind of, you know, heightened, then you know that the month of the dragon is only going to double that effort. All right. So we really need to get back into a place where we feel calm. Okay. And um, grounded. I think I'm going to check and see who I'm going to mute somebody here because we can hear ya. All right. So clash. Clash is change, right? Loosen the death grips in your life. 
If you haven't already been doing it since the start of the year, the Dragon Month is going to force it out of you. So you must cooperate with this energy. What else is holding you back, right? Ask yourself, where am I feeling stuck in my life? Perhaps there is something that I have a death grip on, you know? I can't let go, whether that's my identity, my job, my house, my label, my person, whatever that might be, okay? You have to know what that is because everybody's different. Everybody's doing different things. But each and every one of us have something that we have a grip on. And while I'm talking about um, people who um, have clashes, remember that the month of the dragon is going to kind of fight with the energy of the year. So even for uh, the rest of us that don't have a clash, we're still also going to feel that impact, okay? So we're not immune <laughs> from it just because it doesn't impact our Bazi chart directly, okay? It's just really paying attention to that. And um, because if you have a dog sign in your Bazi chart, then that means you also have this energy of the gate to heaven and hell, which I also talked much deeper in the Chinese New Year talk. So imagine um, babies born this month in the dragon month, whoa, right? They're gonna be born in the year of the dragon, the month of the dragon. And can you imagine if they were, they were born on a dog day or in the dog hour? right? Dog hour would be 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. local time. If they were born like that. Wow, their chart is incredible. Very, very, very powerful. And remember these, these people who have the dog dragon in their Bozzy chart, they are not like the rest of us, okay? They're, when I, I'm talking about people who are already born with these two signs in their four pillars, you know, these are the Bruce Lees, the Pablo Picassos, the Steve Jobs of this world. Um, they have incredible foresight, incredible intuition, a great and magnificent and terrible gift. Um, these people can withstand a lot. They have a strong sense of inner knowing, right? They're highly connected with heaven. So these people can see things, hear things, know things, feel things, the whole, the whole thing. Um, of course, a lot of us are intuitive and we have a, a strong sense of, you know, what's around us. Like sometimes you're walking down an alleyway and your hair sticks out. Like that's, that's also intuition. But I'm talking about like these people, if, if, if they were born, you know, 3000 years ago, their jobs or their career would be fortune tellers. <laughs> okay. Um, but today, right, we have a lot of options. So they can use their intuition to be extraordinary business people, athletes, artists, right? Kung Fu masters. Um, you look at Tiger Woods, he also has the dog dragon, I think David Beckham also has. So and a lot of tennis players, of professional tennis players also have the dog dragon sign. So this is just a very heightened time. Imagine the, the, the portal, the tunnel, whatever you want to call it, of heaven, the spiritual realm is wide open. That's why I say 2024 is not about money. It's not about relationships. It's not about all of that, any of that, even though we still care about it because we have to pay bills. But the theme of 2024 has nothing to do with money, nothing to do with relationships. It's all about the spiritual self and our relationship with the supernatural. So the month of April, that's only going to be um, a greater emphasis. Um, so I want you to do a check-in. I'm giving you a lot of homework. Hopefully you'll re-listen to this talk and kind of journal and write notes down and and let that be the guide for you um, over the next four weeks. Um, but the next couple of days, so like tonight and tomorrow before I, April 4th, just kind of do a quick reflection of how, how was I in October of last year, October of 2023? Just getting a sense of the mood 
where was I mentally? You know, did I feel grounded? What was going on? What kind of mood or conversations and interactions was I having with people? How has this year been so far for me? Has anything changed in the last week leading up to the dragon month, right? Um, I've had clients, um, multiple clients, in fact, who um, were very, very grounded going into the dragon year. And in the last maybe five to seven days, there something shifted energetically for them and most of them actually feel low low vibration okay where they just feel tired they feel less energy they feel a little anxious um they feel like they don't want to be as social so there's some some boundaries um so they don't have that same uh kind of jazzy feeling going into the dragon year. So it's really paying attention to like, what was, how are you the last seven days? You know, have you noticed anything um, even subtle that changed? So subtle, like did my sleep pattern change? You know, how was my appetite leading up to the dragon month? You know, um, how, how fat has the pace of my work shifted a little bit? So these are just some things to just check in and take notice. Okay, we're not judging and we're not trying to overanalyze and kill it. We just want to take notice, okay? Because this is how we pay attention to um, the movement of energy in our life. And so I would just really invite you to, um, to really devote a little bit more time to your interior life, okay? So if you've been doing it consistently for 10, 15 minutes every day, maybe you add another 10 minutes just in the month of April, okay? Because remember, we're simplifying in April, so you should have more, more time and more space for that, okay? I wanted to show an example. Um, this is Pat Tillman. So for those who are not familiar, I think he was from Arizona. I know he played with our Arizona Cardinal um, football and annually we have a Pat Tillman race. So he um, was a professional football player with the NFL and decided to quit his lucrative career to enlist with the military, um, I believe after 9-11 and he was killed um, in the line of duty. Um, can, can everybody make sure you're muted? because we can hear, okay? So I just wanna walk through um, Pat Tillman's chart. You can see Pat Tillman, 1976. He was born in the year of the dragon, the month of the dog and the day of the dog, all right? He is a yang water person like the ocean, okay? This full of energy, full of life, right? Great ideas, very, uh, very big person. But he also has the dog dragon, right? He has the gate to heaven and hell. This is an incredibly intuitive, powerful person, um, definitely has, you know, access to many, many gifts um, that is unique to him, okay? And when he was, mm, so he enlisted um, in 2002, so shortly after 9-11, he was 25 years old, okay? So this is the luck that he was in, from age 20 to 30 years old, this is the luck of the ox. And the ox is an earth element. Okay, a lot of earth, 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 earth. Now, what's interesting about this ox is if you've been paying attention to my Bazi talks, all right, if you've been following, you know that the ox and the dog is a half penalty. There is a string of energy called earth penalty. An earth penalty is very, very serious, okay? This is very negative, not helpful at all. And the reason being is because it takes three animals to bring them together. So it's much, much harder to um, for, these, for this energy to come together. And the three animal is ox, goat, and dog. And because Pat Tillman already has two dogs, when he turned 20, okay, he entered into the luck of the ox. That means he has the ox, and the dog, and he's just waiting for the goat to complete that energy. And I can't tell you how many examples I have, like Jackie Onassis, um, 
Farrah Fawcett, right? Princess Diana, like all of these tragedies occurred because of earth penalty. So on the day that he died was April 22nd in 2004, which is interesting because it's also the year of the dragon. So this dragon is going to create that penalty, penalty, and it's going to double clash, right? Because the dragon and the dog clash, clash. And then the day of the goat, which means the goat, the ox, the dog is going to formulate all that earth penalty. So in that, now I don't know what time, okay? It must not be a nobleman when he was, um, when he was killed <clears throat> because sometimes you can have a nobleman and that nobleman will save you, okay? Just very similar to um, Jeremy Renner, okay? Jeremy Renner also was mowed over on his clash and earth penalty, earth, because it was a tractor trail, earth, okay? Um, but it, but he had a nobleman during that time. There's no nobleman here, okay? Or we, I don't know what time it was. So sometimes we can always go back and look at events <clears throat> that have happened in people's lives. And you can always see in Bazi, it spells out, right? So that's, uh, that's one with, with Pat Tillman. Now, and the reason why we say the dragon is so serious is because it is the absent of noblemen. It's an absent of peach blossom. It's the absent of all of the symbolic stars that we love, like academic star, star of art, star of virtue, all of those, none of it. The dragon has none of it. We call the dragon the void. It's an empty space, okay? It's either heaven or hell, right? And so usually this is the time when people are tested for their strength and their character because when you are put to the test, are you going to look at, you know, lift up your head and look up to the sky, to heaven, right? Because you, and, and that's often when people are, they go down on their knees, to pray, right? Because you're looking up into the heavens, help, <laughs> right? Or humility like this, I can't do it on my own. Or you look down to hell and that's when addiction, right? Destruction, right? All of those things also happen. So imagine every single person in this world today are going to be entering into this sphere whether or not they're aware of it, because they know Bazi or not, right? But they're all going to, we all are going to be feeling this dynamic. Some people more intense than others. Obviously, if your Bazi chart has the dog sign, or if you have the dragon sign, you will be feeling this more directly, okay? But for the rest of us, we're going to be feeling it indirectly because we're going to have people in our lives <laughs> that's going to be impacted by it, but also because we are also receptive to that energy, okay? So now imagine we now only have to rely on the day because there's still nobleman days, right? But wow, there it's just the day, <laughs> right? In the past, we have, whoa, some people have nobleman years, some people have nobleman months, right? So we can lean on each other, right? So I can partner up with someone that has a nobleman, you know, even if I don't have a nobleman. But April, nobody has a nobleman, okay? So that's why I say, please try to minimize all of your, your projects, okay? Please wait until at least going into May, all right? So really asking yourself, what are you doing? I had a client once, um, she said, Jen, how are you preparing for April? And I said, well, to be honest, I've been preparing since 2023, right? That's why you learn Bazi. And I said, but the way that I am I chose to, to handle the month of April is I, I've been very busy with work since the start of the new year. I'm taking a little bit of time off. I'm traveling to um, spend time with family, with the babies, right? Um, leisurely travels are fine. Okay. A lot, of, I'm getting a lot of messages from people, John, I'm traveling. Oh my gosh, something crazy going to happen. It's like, no, leisurely travel, meaning there's no stress. There's no expectation. 
there's no like crazy commitment. Now, if I'm traveling to visit my family who are all crazy, then maybe not. <laughs> okay. But if I'm traveling where it is going to help me with my relaxing or my recalibrating, then that's okay. All right. I'm taking a little bit more. I'm opening up my schedule a little bit more where it's not so booked back to back to back to back. I'm having a little bit more space so that I can just move with this energy. So that's the invitation. Try, try to do something similar. OK. We need to pay attention to the self penalty. Again, there's already a self penalty in the year. That means you have a triple self penalty in the month of the dragon. So whatever self-sabotaging behaviors that you're able to kind of tame, you know, and like constructively, you know, put it in a bubble over here, you're gonna have to try harder during this month. Okay. There's self penalty is very uncomfortable. All right. This isn't something that you shout out to the world and tell people about it. This is a secret, okay? Self-penalty is a secret, something that you are you feel embarrassed about, something you feel shame about. It's like I wake up at 2 a.m. in the morning and I sneak to the kitchen and eat cupcakes, you know, but I'm a fitness instructor like that. That's a self-penalty. Or I don't really have a lot of money, but I gamble. I gamble my money. I do the things I'm not supposed to do. Or I'm or in a committed relationship, but I flirt with the idea of being with someone else or toying with the idea like this. And I'm not pulling these examples out of thin air. These are real life examples from my own clients that have happened. So you really have to be honest about the things that what you project one way in, in the public and what you do behind closed doors, okay? And sometimes the self-penalty is, is between relationship. That's why we say there's troubles at home, okay? And especially if you have a dragon sign on the day, if you were born on the day of the, of the dragon. So communication and patience are going to be key in helping um, couples navigate this very sensitive time. And, you know, I had a um, multiple clients, actually, they laugh at this, but one of Master Lowe's um, very pragmatic <laughs> advice for couples, either if they're under clash or if they have penalty, is to travel separately, to do things apart, because you don't want to be, you know, for us, we're like, but we love each other. <laughs> yes, yes, no one's doubting the love. But sometimes when you're energetically not well, and if both of you are energetically not well, it creates a very, very difficult scenario at home where small things become big things, okay? We say things we can't take back. There's a lot of agitation that are happening. So um, if you have children, young children, and you know that they have a self penalty in their Bazi chart, really encourage um, conversations, you know, with your children to say, you know, what's bothering you? Um, maybe they throw tantrums. Maybe they do. They have certain behaviors that are not healthy. It's a beautiful time, the teaching moment in helping them to construct a healthier um, coping mechanism um, rather than just sitting in front of the video uh, TV and playing video games. And that's how they cope with, you know, um, no friends or how they cope with, you know, uh, uh, social anxiety, for example. So just pay attention to that. Okay. Um, I wanted to bring up Kate Middleton and I was actually thinking about her at the beginning of the year because I, I know her chart. I've talked about her chart many, many times in workshops and in my formal classes. So, um, Kate Middleton is Yang water also like the ocean, very similar to um, Pat Tillman. And you see that she was born on the day of the dragon and the hour of the dog. So she has dog dragon also. Very, very interesting, very intuitive, very attuned kind of person. And what's interesting is, um, you know, a lot of things happened to her in her late 20s. Uh, she got married. She became a princess. She started a family, right? She had three kids. Um, none of her pregnancies were easy, okay? They were actually very hard on her body. She had some difficult pregnancies. 
thankfully, you know, all the birds birthing, the children are healthy, but she herself um, did not um, handle those pregnancies very well. Um, why? Because you see from age 28 to 38, so she is 42 years old now. Um, so in the previous luck, in the previous 10 years, you see she was under the luck of the dragon. And that dragon is a penalty and a clash, right? See the penalty, this is scrutiny, right? Penalty, scrutiny. Can you imagine being in the public eye? You're being judged for everything, being compared to Princess Diana, um, all the drama rama, all the controversy, scandal, and everything, right, that, that is happening. That can't, she is very composed um, because she has a lot of metal element. These are all resources. She's very reserved, very polite, very put together. Like she's not loud, you know, and kind of animated and, and very like spastic like this. Resources means conserve. You know, it's a very, it's a person who has control like this. They follow the rules and they're very put together. And so on the outside, it looks like she's very composed, but self penalty means we don't know what's going on behind closed doors. You know, what, what is going through her mind, what is going through her heart, what's going through her, um, her physical body, right? Physically. And it's interesting because she had abdominal surgery. It's the stomach, it's earth, earth. So who knows? Maybe something was already going on in her stomach from 28 to 38. Now, that dragon clashes with this dog. And remember, the hour pillar is children. It's a clash, clash. So yes, she had children, right? So every time people ask me, when's a good time to have a baby? Um, <laughs> and all of that fun stuff. Or when I make comments that you're very fertile, um, it's usually when there is a connection to the hour pillar. And from age 28 to 38, she has a clash. That's a connection. So that's why she had children during that time. Now she entered into uh, this new luck, right? Because she's 42 years old now. So she's not quite halfway through this luck, which is wood and fire. Um, thankfully, this is a nobleman for her. The, the snake, this is a snake sign. Uh, and the snake is a nobleman. Um, so what that means is from a overall grand scheme of things, she's under the protection of the nobleman, but she's having a tough year because this is the dragon year. So imagine all the things that happened here kind of intensified in a single year, right? And recreating that penalty, recreating that clash. She has stomach surgery, right? Talk about like the trauma of actually going into your stomach and God knows what are they pulling out? What are they cleaning and what um, fixing? And earth, earth is cancer, the cells in the body. Okay. So from sort of the uh, forecast, Kate Middleton is entering into a very sensitive time in the month of April. And I think this is when she's doing her treatment for her cancer, okay? So um, let's just, I mean, I like to pray for everybody, so we'll pray for her, but you can see that there is definitely some major sensitivity going on. Um, now, for other people, you might freak out, like, oh my God, I have a dog and dragon in my clash, do I have cancer? Calm down. Like, it's not always cancer, but it can be other things. Like maybe you're just very anxious right now, you know? Maybe you're not really paying attention to your intuition as much. Maybe you're very, very bloated, you know? So try not to run off the deep end, okay? Unless you've talked to me one-on-one -on -one specifically about your chart, please don't draw any conclusion. These are just examples of what can happen with one person, okay? And I don't have time to go over all of it. This is a client of mine, a real life person. She is also Yang Earth. And she has a born on the day of the dragon and the year of the dog. She is very, very intuitive. She told me at the start of the year, um, she's been dreaming a lot. And she, um, she, I think we all dream all the time. It's just we don't remember them. But she remembers her dreams so vividly that she can wake up and actually write about them. 
very clearly um, because this is the gate to heaven and hell. Um, she's also going through um, physical healing. She's trying to heal her gut. Um, she also went on a spiritual pilgrimage to try to heal her spirit, okay, uplift her spirit. Um, and she's noticing that, um, uh, you know, with the dragon year, she's, she's a little bit feeling a little bit more critical, you know, of herself, uh, of like, you know, you can, why can't you do this? You should be able to do this, do it faster. Uh, are you, you know, getting a setback? What's wrong with you? Like all that self-talk, self-criticism. Um, and that's because she has a self-penalty. So it's very subtle. Like if you're not really paying attention, you, you probably wouldn't even notice it. But once you know what to look for, you'll begin to notice it. And you're like, whoa, I do run through the gamut <laughs> in my mind. And so because I can't be in your mind, <laughs> I hope not, um, you have to be self-accountable to yourself. You have to draw yourself out of that. You have to come up with a mechanism to get you out of that mental loop. So it does happen. Um, okay. Um, so here's your tips, days to watch out for. All right. So huh, the dragon days are on the 10th, 22nd, and May 4th. Can you imagine the babies being born those days? Dragon year, dragon month, dragon day. And every morning between 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. is the hour of the dragon. Okay. And then we also want to watch out for the dog days because the dog is going to clash with the dragon. Okay. And guess what, guys? On Thursday, when we start the dragon month, it's the dog day. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my gosh, what is going on with this energy uh, pattern? So, and then every dog hour is between 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. Now, when I talk about the Chinese New Year talk, a lot of tragedies happen in the dog and in the dragon hours, okay? So we just want to pay attention. Um, are there going to be something happening, you know, politically, whatever, whatever you want to dot, 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 you know, add? Probably. Uh, at least that is the anticipation. Um, there's already a lot of things bubbling up, leading up to the dragon, as a society, a country, a nation, uh, the humanity as a whole, I feel like we're we're not in our best possible position going into all this very precarious energy. Um, you know, think of it as like a, a human, probably you know not in the best mindset, right? Not physically well, sick, negative right? Going into the dragon. So it, we're, the world is not set up in the best light. Um, and so we just want to pay attention, um, stay informed, but not obsessed with what's going on with the news. Um, and then when things happen, we're just all going to be like, okay, okay. You know, the, the bridge that fell in uh, Baltimore, um, that also happened because of the dragon sign, by the way, I did not post about it. Um, because I was like, oh, yeah, of course, weird things are happening. And then you have other um, phenomenon happening, like eclipses and whatever. Like you just, everything is just stacked up, you know? So it is what it is. <laughs> this, this is the time for us to uh, strengthen our resolve, okay, and stay as grounded as possible. All right. Um, I am teaching the Bazi course. Um, it is still tentative. I'm waiting to get confirmation on how many people are interested. It's going to be offered online and it will be broken down into 14 classes. So it's a little bit easier to digest. All of this information is up on my website. If you're interested, shoot me an email. And um, I am offering a Bazi package. I offered this last year. Um, but if you feel like this is something that would be of interest to you to keep you accountable, um, as well as you want to continue to learn, um, not just your own chart, but maybe your partner's chart or your children's chart, um, the, the Bazi package has really been very helpful for a lot of people to help them stay the course, you know, kind of keep consistent and, and accountable to what, what is happening. And we can zoom in. So rather than just learning about the year kind of in a generality, um, we can be a little bit more targeted and more specific 
with what we're talking about on topic with what's going on with your life. So if you're interested, again, send me a message. Now I want to talk about feng shui really quick um, because it is we're at the hour mark. Lots to talk about, though. Now, look, at this is the flying star chart of the feng shui for April. And look at every grid is a duplicated number. <laughs> I'm dying. It's like the Bazi is so sensitive. And now the feng shui is also sensitive. So look at the five, five in the West, right? Remember five, five means, um, oh, look at this. My, my, um, I did not update my, uh, what do you call this? My notes here. So I will have to email you the slide or go on Instagram and I'll put the slide up. This is from last month. See, not thinking. Jen, hello. So remember five is misfortune. Two is sickness, right? So what is in the southeast side of your house? Okay, now if you follow the Chinese New Year talk, you would have already had the cures for the year, right? And you just keep that there. So if you have your six metal coins, you have your six metal rod wind chime and your, your bamboos, you keep that there. For the whole year of the dragon, you leave it there. But now you have to bring in a new set, okay, of items, of cure items, and you need to replicate it again because look at that, two, two, sickness, sickness, Wes, misfortune, misfortune, all right? So um, take a picture of this with without the, the English translation, but... Like I said, I'll either email it or post it on Instagram so that you can get the um, updated instructions. But really, it's a duplication of 2024. Um, this is usually, this is perfect case study for me. I'll, I'll probably be getting a lot of comments in April. Um, I had a client many, many years ago. He was um, on a ladder, and I've told this story before. He was on a ladder fixing something in front of his house. And that front the feng shui already had a five. It was part of the natal chart of the house. Um, but that year, it was also a five in the front. And um, when he was up on the ladder, he fell off the ladder and he lost his eyeball, like literally lost his eye. He's he's blind on one eye. And I remember when they called me, they remembered the date because obviously they called the ambulance and everything. And when we line up the flying star, the feng shui of the house, it was 5552. Misfortune, 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 sickness in that exact moment. And then we looked at his Bazi chart and his Bazi chart had a clash and a penalty. You see, clash and penalty. So we can't, we can't obviously live our life Bazi and feng shui every given moment, but for the most part, we say at minimum, take care of the feng shui of your house for the year. And then if you can, like in this month, take care of the feng shui of the month, okay? Now, if you can make the investment, feng shui your house properly. So because you're just touching on a, a very surfacey layer of the energy for your house, but we don't know the essence of your house without a comprehensive feng shui evaluation, okay? So um, there is a feng shui class coming up in May in person here in Scottsdale. Um, it's still tentative. We're waiting for a few more people to sign up. <clears throat> I do have a minimum requirement. This has to be done in person because there's a lot of floor plan exercises that we have to do. Um, and so if you are interested in this, certainly sign up. You can help yourself and help your families and friends. Um, book. All right, that's it. That's all I got to say about the dragon. Um, our next talk is on the 2nd of May. All right, uh, please stay in touch. Message me if you have any questions or interest on anything. Uh, I'm going to go through some questions. What do you think of the eclipse on April 8th? I, we don't like eclipses. <laughs> uh, I know a lot of people like to go out and look at the eclipse. But I've said this multiple times in the past in Chinese metaphysics and also in Christianity, when you look at um, if you read the Bible, but also in Chinese metaphysics, um, we don't like these phenomenon because they're considered bad omen <laughs> because they are the harbinger 
of a lot of things. And so we don't, we don't like Chinese people don't usually go out and look at the eclipse and dance under the eclipse because we are very aware um, that it just brings a lot of energy and it's not good or it's not, it's not, it's not something to, you know, celebrate. It's, it's a once in a lifetime, probably phenomenon. And we'll have to see what happens on the eighth. Um, if you have earth dragon in the hour, what does the impact, it means children, you, something going on with your children. Um, so need to pay, if you have children, you know, maybe they, they're, they need your attention or <clears throat> you're more worried about them. Again, we're only talking about one pillar here. I need to see the, the whole composite of the chart and where you're at and what is the earth element to your day master. So um, I can only make that brief comment. Okay, any other questions? <laughs> I wish you all a high vibe, safe, grounded, easy, Dragon Month. I am here to be of service if you need anything. Okay. I will be out of town, but um, I'm here. So um, please take care. Okay. And, and if you see funny things going on in the world, send them to me. <laughs> I like, I like to see what's going on around the world. So, okay. All right, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.